Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is Dani Atom, who is the former head of the Mossad and a former member of parliament with the Labour Party. He joins us in duplex from Tel Aviv. Mr. Yatom, thank you very much for being on the France 24 interview. You're welcome. So I obviously want to ask you about the events in Egypt. We've heard a lot of concerns in Israel. Do you share them? Yes, I share them. There is a basis for concerns. Nobody knows exactly how the things will uh, develop uh, in uh, Egypt. There is a worst-case scenario. Uh, in such a case, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, which is an extreme uh, Islamic uh, movement, might uh, be much more influential, even uh, very, very influential in any future uh, regime in Egypt. And uh, the peace between Israel and Egypt in such a case might be at risk. I hope that uh, the next regime and the government for the transition period will be uh, pro-peace. Uh, they, they will continue to, sec to secure the peace which is a cornerstone in the stability of uh, Egypt, Israel, and the Middle East. And I hope that the events in Egypt will not bring the entire Middle East into a chaotic situation. Isn't there a contradiction? Israel portrays itself as the only democracy in the Middle East. And now there is a movement against Mr. Mubarak, who's been in power for 30 years, and Israel seems to be opposed to the democratic aspirations of the Egyptian people. No, we, we, we do not intervene whatsoever. What I said, I didn't say that Mubarak should stay. I said that uh, I hope that uh, the transitional government and the government which will be elected in a democratic uh, process in Egypt will uh, continue to secure the peace, will continue to guard the peace and to develop the relations between Egypt and Israel, and uh, will, uh, uh, will, will, will apply uh, and uh, behave according to Western standards and morale. Uh, what do you make of Vice President Omar Suleiman, who he was uh, ha former head of the in intelligence uh, services? Uh, is he a good transitional person? Again, uh, I'm not going to intervene. It is a question that should be decided by uh, the Egyptian people. But from uh, my point of view, knowing uh, General Omar Suleiman for so many years, I think that he is a very, very clever, talented uh, man. He is also uh, a man that uh, would like to continue the line of developing the relations between Egypt and Israel. Now, uh, having good relations between those two countries, Egypt, Egypt and Israel, is not only an Israeli interest. It should be an interest of the entire world in order to make sure that the Middle East will continue to be a stable place. I want to ask you about the attitude of the Obama uh, administration. There's a columnist in Israel by the name of Eitan Haber in Yediot Aharonot who wrote, quote unquote, that Obama threw Mubarak to the dogs. Do you share his opinion? Well, yes, uh, I think that uh, this is true. Uh, Mubarak was for uh, so many, three de 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 decades, so many years, one of the best friends of the United States, of many, many uh, presidents of the United States and the United States uh, people. Um, it was Egypt is a cornerstone, as Israel in the American uh, policy in the Middle East. And uh, it uh, didn't uh, take uh, very long until the American administration, Obama and uh, Secretary Clinton, came publicly and even before uh, uh, speaking about uh, a trial uh, to calm down the situation, 
immediately they started spoke uh, started to speak about uh, how to transfer the power uh, from Mubarak to uh, those that will come after him and by that of course they weakened the, the stature of Mubarak is it a mistake in a very very uh, dramatic way so was it a mistake a betrayal maybe look uh, the United States acts according to the American interests and not according to the Israeli or the Egyptian interests but uh, uh, with my humble opinion, I think that uh, by throwing Mubarak immediately after the riots started and not uh, taking some other direction, like trying to persuade Mubarak to appear earlier than he appeared and uh, tell the public that he is ready to step down and there should be an orderly transitional period, uh, they immediately called uh, Mubarak to step down, immediately. And uh, I, I'm sure that Mubarak uh, feels that it was a betrayal. What does it say about having America as an ally for Israel? I mean, what does it say about such alliances if a strategic partner like Egypt can be abandoned? Uh, it says uh, a lot. And first and foremost, it says what uh, we declare uh, since the uh, beginning of the Israeli state that uh, we have to count on ourselves and that we, we need to have the ability to defend ourselves by ourselves. So you feel Israel is again kind of going through this kind of siege mentality that it had for many years until uh, the peace treaty with Egypt back in uh, 1979? There, there might be such a situation. I hope that the situation will not deteriorate to that uh, point. I hope that whoever comes and takes the power from Mubarak will be uh, one that uh, will continue to develop the peace and to develop peaceful relations between Egypt and Israel. If it will be an extreme element that uh, opposes Israel and opposes the peace treaty between Israel and Egypt, then it might bring the, the Middle East to a very, very low point. Are you concerned uh, about the situation in Jordan, in Lebanon, and also in the Palestinian territories? I mean, about all this turmoil having an effect in those places. The authoritarian uh, leaders, the monarchs, monarchs in uh, the Middle East and uh, elsewhere, they should be highly concerned because what started in Tunisia and continues right now in Egypt might uh, enter into their uh, home houses and places and have the same uh, developments and the same effect. They should be uh, uh, worried and uh, concerned and they should take some measures like, for instance, uh, the clever uh, King of Jordan uh, did in order to make sure that such developments are not going to happen or to occur in their countries. But yes, this is true in Saudi Arabia, in Jordan, in Yemen, that it started already, in Lebanon, in, uh, in uh, uh, Damascus, in Syria. They should be uh, very concerned. And so should Israel. I mean, for example, uh, the impact of what happens in Egypt and Gaza could be important, right? Yes, uh, well, uh, you know, I'm not sure that it will uh, spread uh, to Gaza uh, due to the fact that uh, although uh, the Hamas uh, is not a democratic movement, the Hamas was elected in a democratic process. And I know that uh, there are uh, many people in Gaza that uh, do not enjoy being under the tough, 
uh, rule and regime of uh, Hamas, but I'm not sure that it will uh, spread over to Gaza and to the territories uh, before it happens. This is my assessment. It will come to Yemen. As a matter of fact, it came already to Yemen, and it might and it 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 might affect some other monarchies and some other authoritarian regimes. Just I I would like to uh, add in addition that uh, uh, I I hope, and this is also my assessment, that the majority of the Egyptian uh, uh, citizens. They do not want uh, to see Egypt becoming a uh, duplicate of uh, Iran, meaning that the Muslim Brotherhood will uh, take the rule uh, because uh, their life under uh, such circumstances will be miserable. You think that this is so a possibility? I hope that, uh, there is a possibility. Uh, look, we know that uh, Muslim Brotherhoods they uh, might uh, gain something between 20 to 30 percent of power of votes once there will be a transparent, uh, full-fledged democratic elections in Egypt. Yet it does not to say that they are going to be the biggest or the strongest party, uh, 90, uh, 20 to 30 percent might be very influential, but if the Egyptian, the majority of the Egyptian people do not want them to uh, rule the country, they might be in the opposition, and a secular uh, fragments of the uh, Egyptian people will vote uh, for others to be in the coalition. In such a case, there might be an internal struggle in Egypt, but in, in such a case, I uh, tend to uh, think that uh, the regime will continue the same line, uh, uh, speaking about uh, external relations. The regime, the new regime, will continue the same line as the nowadays regime. And the main uh, differences that should be made in Egypt are, uh, lo are, are, are internal domestic, like uh, uh, civil rights, like uh, beef up the economy, like uh, elevate the standard of livings, uh, uh, like create uh, many, many, many jobs in order to tackle the unemployment. But I hope, as I said, that from the point of view of external policy, it will follow the same line of the Mubarak's regime. Just the last question. Would Mohammed el Baradai be a good candidate for Israel, if I may say? Again, uh, if he will be uh, elected by the Egyptian people, he will be the one that Israel will have to deal with. Uh, I'm not sure that Mohammed el Baradai understanding his uh, power, I'm not sure that Muhammad al-Baradai is going to be a substantial candidate for uh, the presidency, but uh, the future will tell. Okay, Dani Atom, thank you very much for being with us on the France 24 interview in duplex from Tel Aviv, and thank you all for watching the show. Stay tuned for more news.